The Kia Seltos got an upgrade for 2024, most notably on the inside. And in this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about the vehicle. Going to be covering off interior, exterior technology, difference in trim levels, and everything in between. If you're looking for some tech-specific walkthroughs, or if you want to find a build link for this specific one, you'll find that down in the description of this video. You're also going to find the contact information for Durham Kia, who were nice enough to lend this thing to me for the afternoon to shoot the video for you guys today. The one in behind me is just the regular white exterior, and it's the EX trim level, which is one of the entry-level models. There are a few different style wheels that you're going to find inside of the Seltos, and you're either looking at 17 or 18 inch, with the 18 inch wheels typically going to be in those higher trim levels of the vehicle. Doesn't matter if you're in Canada or the States, you are going to find the Seltos front wheel drive or all wheel drive, but that is also trim level specific. So depending on the trim level, like when you're in those higher ones, strictly all wheel, but when you're in the lower trims, front wheel with the availability for all wheel drive instead. Whether you go all wheel drive or not is going to depend on where you live and if you care about gas mileage. Because all-wheel drive, slightly less fuel economy in comparison, but big benefit is that wintertime, better traction. So it's going to be a matter of personal preference there. There is a nice little black highlight that follows all the way throughout the body of the vehicle. And then pushing towards the front end, there is the option for either halogen or LED headlamps inside of this. So the halogen, just in the base model. Otherwise, you're looking at LED headlamps and then fog lamps down below. But the styling in the front end is very unique. You've got this like groove texture that goes all the way through the grill on the top and the bottom. Nice blacked out grill there, which looks sharp. Kia badge along the very top. And that same kind of like metallic highlight there follows through to the bottom part of the bumper. There's not a ton of technology you're going to find in the front end though. So you're never going to find the forward sensing system inside of this thing whatsoever. But you will find a few different options for the engine, just depending on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. Just between the I and the A and the Kia badge, there's a release. So you're going to go off to the side and up she goes on a prop bar, which I mean, realistically, not difficult to take that thing or to lift it up whatsoever. And then we're looking at the two liter naturally aspirated, so non turbocharged engine. And the Seltos does have two different engine choices that are available. So it's either the two liter or the 1.6 liter turbo. And the 1.6 liter is just like a night and day difference power wise compared to this. Because this 2 liter has 147 horsepower and 132 pound feet of torque, versus the 1.6 liter turbo is 195 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. It's like a little bit of a difference. So if you are power conscious, you want more power, you definitely want to look at the SX trim level or the X Pro, which feature the 1.6 turbo. But if you're just looking for like a first driver or you just don't care about fuel economy, you just want to get A to B nicely, the 2 liter is still a pretty good option. But there's not too much under the hood here. There's a nice little engine cover. And then if you're doing some work yourself, you could easily top up fluids, checking and changing your oil, and then easy access to the battery. But the one thing you want to make sure you're doing is at least regularly maintaining your vehicle. You want to make sure that you're maintaining the manufacturer's warranty, which is pretty solid. But you also want to make sure you get the best possible life out of your vehicle. I mean, you're spending a couple bucks on this thing, you might want to make sure you're taking care of it. So just at very minimum, regular, manu uh, regular oil changes, but also just make sure you're taking it in for regularly scheduled maintenance as well. Taking a peek at the key fob for the Seltos. So this is just like a nice little slip cover that's on there, but there's not too much to the actual fob itself. You've got unlock or lock button, unlock button, horn or panic alarm, and then there's also remote start. So to remote start the vehicle, you just need to make sure that it's locked first. Once it's locked, you're just going to press and hold. So the vehicle has remote started there. And then to cancel the remote start, you just press that circle button there again once. Taking a peek at the size of the Seltos. This thing, pretty low profile and it's not too long, which is fantastic. I did mention drivetrain. We're strictly looking at either front wheel or all wheel drive. You've got that option just depending on what you care about. Roof rack rails are there. You do have the option for crossbars as well. So if you do want to put like a roof rack carrier on there, you do have the flexibility to do it. Uh, there's some basic technology on the outside. Like if we take a look at the side view mirrors, side view mirrors do have lights. So that blind spot monitoring system. So if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, that's going to highlight to let you know. Along the driver's side door here, you could push this button if you wanted to lock the doors. 
but you could also push and open up. Nice, but let's have a peek. So it's this nice glossy highlight all throughout and that follows through the dash all the way through the passenger side. But we'll touch on that one when we actually get inside. Looking at some basic highlights, you can see there, nice kind of cutout, and that's the same for the top and then for the bottom speaker. Really neat groove texture there. But there are a few different speaker systems that are available inside of the South House, just depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in. It's nice stitching that follows throughout. Basic side view mirror control, basic window control, little handle, and then storage down there as well. Side, the vent has a nice metallic highlight. Basic controls there, so you can either increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen or the media screen. There would be other buttons there for the head-up display and a few others, but it ultimately depends on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. It's just this one, fully naked. And then the auto start stop button, so that's the one that's potentially going to kill power to the engine if you're stopped for an extended period of time. And then basic traction control as well. The steering wheel inside of the vehicle is going to be manual telescoping, and that's the same way across the entire vehicle lineup. These are your carpeted mats you're going to find in the Seltos, with your nice Seltos lettering there. And then for the seats. So whether you get cloth seats, faux leather, etc., it's going to depend on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. And then that trim level is also going to dictate whether it's a manual seat, like what you see here, or if it's a power adjustable seat. So manual adjust, you can bring the seat forwards and backwards by lifting up there. And then you can increase, so if you want to raise the seat up, you can go that way, or you can drop down if you wanted to. And then you're going to adjust your backrest this way. If you had a power seat, you just have a series of toggles to slide the seat forward, backwards, up and down. And then there'd be another toggle to adjust your backrest as well. It's very straightforward. But let's hop inside, because the inside here, really nice. It's compact and cozy. I love the new cluster screen that's available inside of this thing. The 10.25 inch, I think, is just beautiful. And then the multimedia screen, the base one. I love that it's wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. I don't like how it's not wireless in the bigger one. I'm like, ah, backwards. But still, the screens themselves are nice. It is good that you've got factory navigation available in the larger screen, though. But let's talk seats. So the seats inside of this one are comfortable. The headrest, two-way adjustable. Not bad. Could be a little bit more cushion, but still, it's still pretty comfy for the headrest. Not too shabby. With the seat as far back and as far down as it's going to go, that is ridiculous. I've got like five and a half, almost six inches, six, yeah, plus probably like six plus inches of headspace there. That's wild. Like I'm six feet tall. So there is plenty of space inside of this thing if you need it, which is great. But so seat comfort is there. There's a series of different levers along the side there. So when you're in the manual seats, you can go up and down. There's also one to adjust your backrest. And then there's a bar between your legs in order to slide the seat forwards or backwards as necessary. Nice. Next up, taking a peek at the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen inside of the Kia Seltos. So there are technically two different clusters that are available. You're going to find this larger 10.25 inch low in the majority of the lineup. So that when you're in the base model, it's going to be a smaller 4.2 inch traditional cluster instead. But I mean, that looks really nice. The steering wheel inside of this thing is going to be manual telescoping. So you can see just by my left knee there, you can drop down, move it in and out, up and down to find that perfect position. And just click it, log it back into place few small highlights before we jump through. So down the center stack by the shifter, there is a button for the heated steering wheel. And then there's also a little drive mode selector switch so you can move between different modes. So each mode does something different. Like do you want to essentially be in like a gas saving type of a mode or sporty performance where it's going to hold on to the RPMs a little bit more, give you a nice sporty feel instead. So you've got some options there. This is good. Uh, steering wheel, like I said, nice and comfy, heated all the way around. Stick on the left side is here for your blinkers, your high beams, lock it into an auto mode. The auto high beam, what that one does is that if your beams are on and recognize, the vehicle recognizes somebody's oncoming, it's going to dim them and then it's going to bring them back up when that car passes. So very smart. You can figure out what's going on with your fog lamps on off and then what's going on with your running lamps. I always just recommend to keep the running lamps in the auto mode though so that they can come on or turn off as necessary. Stick on the right side is going to be for your front wipers and then rear wipers there. 
you're going to pull towards you for the front wiper fluid and push away for the rear. The buttons on the left hand side there, there are a series of different options. So when you have the smaller 8 inch media screen, this button is going to be for the Google Assistant or Siri Assistant. So you just do a press there in order to activate. When you've got the larger screen, it's going to also have double function. So you'd be able to make phone calls. You could navigate using your voice and things like that. This is to answer or hang up on phone calls. You've got a mode button there, and that's going to let you change between a few different things. So if you wanted to essentially change between your different media sources, you've got that flexibility. And then there's a star button, which is going to let you go between a few different options as well. So rejecting calls, voice memo, home, things like that. So you've got a few different options. This is going to allow you to go through all of your different presets there. You can also do just a press and hold if you wanted to seek. So it's a long press and hold there, but you could seek that way if you want to. You can also up and down on your volume or push in if you wanted to mute your volume out instead. These buttons are for your basic cruise control system. So you turn cruise control on, and then once you get to speed, you're going up in order to set, and then up or down to increase or decrease one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. This is to cancel your cruise control, and then you've also got a lane centering system. So this essentially is going to keep you nice and balanced in your lane as you go. There would technically be the option for smart cruise control with the distance indicator, and the big benefit there is essentially a set it and forget it cruise control. But that's going to be available on the higher trims of the vehicle. So if you want to walk through on the higher trim steering wheel, you'll find that down in the description of this video. But if you want to use the, the, the adaptive cruise system in general, you'll find that video in the description as well. And then these two buttons are going to be to navigate through the cluster screen itself. So essentially we're going through different pages and then up and down through those different pages as available. There's also this generic screen, which gives you some added settings that are available as well. But I'm going to zoom you in and let's go through some different options. All right, so first thing, start off, and I guess I'll kind of outline everything. So along the left side there, you can see that's your current speed. Along the right side, that's your RPM gauge, current fuel level, and then you've got current temperature for the vehicle as well. How much gas you currently have left based off of your current fuel tank. And then very bottom there, you can see how many kilometers you've driven and then the outside temperature. That little A is the auto start stop system. So that's the one that's potentially going to kill power to the engine. If you're stopped for an extended period of time, you can toggle it on or off. There's a series of buttons just by your left knee to do that. So if you don't like the engine turning off, when you come to a stop, you could technically turn it off. And I did mention series of different drive modes with a slightly different look as you go through each mode kind of nice. But let's navigate through our pages there. So starting off with our different settings. So you're going to press an old OK. And there you go. So series of options, you've got warning volume. So as you have warning messages come up, do you want it to be like a high normal or low leading vehicle departure? So if you're driving and the vehicle in front of you starts to drive away, you'll get a message letting you know that that uh, the chime letting you know that that vehicle's driven away. So you can know to stop not paying attention and start driving. But it is useful, but you could toggle it off if you want to. Driving safety, forward safety, and warnings. So whether or not you get that one or not. So if you're going to be in a potential collision, it could let you know. And then you can see there when you toggle it off, that's going to bring up a message along the bottom. Lane safety systems available as well. So if you start to veer over into another lane without signaling, it's going to gently nudge you back into your lane. It's very different from the lane centering button along the bottom right there. So this lane centering one is going to keep you perfectly balanced in your lane versus the other one that we were looking at is going to just gently nudge you back into your lane instead. So let's hop back in, and that was driver safety, blind spot safety. So if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, it's going to highlight and let you know. Same idea, safe exit. If you're going to open up your side door and there's somebody that's oncoming, it's going to chime at you and let you know. Moving back for parking safety, so rear cross traffic alert. So as you go to back up, if somebody's coming perpendicular, so from the left or right side, it's going to let you know of a potential collision. Is that? No. Was that it? I think that was it. Yeah, that's the basics of driver assistance settings. Next up, you've got drive info. So there are a few different counters here. So basic drive info, that's from the last time that the vehicle was turned off. You can press and hold the OK button there. So it's this one here. So you'd press it in in order to reset it. This one is since you've refueled the vehicle. But same idea, you can do it for press and hold to reset. Or your total accumulated info. So this essentially is going to be your trip one counter. So three counters, it's since the vehicle was turned on last, since you've refueled, and your generic just like trip one info instead. And then you've got the auto start stop system as well. 
Same idea, you can restart it, and that's essentially going to be the vehicle turning off, turning itself off after an extended period of time. Next up, series of settings, which we've already seen the driver assistant settings, but there are some cluster options. So if you wanted to link it to your drive mode, that's the selector switch we had in our center stack, or you could permanently lock it out to any of the other modes instead. So if you like the look of one of the other modes, you could tweak it out if you want. Wiper delay, icy road warnings, welcome sounds, they're all basics. Lights, so illumination, you could adjust the brightness or darkness of the cluster screen here if you want to. You can also do that just down the just down by your left knee, there's a button there as well. Moving back, one touch turn signal. So you've got three flashes as a default, but you can have it's just a single flash, five flashes, or seven flashes instead. Headlight delay, so when you go to lock the vehicle using the fob, do the lights just turn off, or is there a little 30 second delay for that? And then high beam assist. So that's the one when you're in the auto high beam mode. If the vehicle senses somebody's oncoming, it's going to automatically lower them, and then bring them right back on again. Door settings, do you want the door to lock automatically when you shift, or when you start to drive? Auto unlock when you shift to park, turn the vehicle off, or do you never want it to auto unlock? And then two press unlock on the key fob itself. Convenient settings, so rear occupant alerts, so if you turn the vehicle off, it's going to tell you to check the back seats, your service interval, and then whether or not the vehicle shuts down automatically after 60 minutes, 30 minutes, or just never shuts off. So if you're going to a drive-in, you could set it off so that it never turns off, and you'd always have your vehicle running for you instead. And then units, do you want to measure in either kilometers or miles per hour? Temperature unit, Celsius or Fahrenheit. Economy unit, either kilometers or liters, and then that turns out to miles per gallon. So if we're, if we're in speed unit, miles, and back, that's going to change out to either US gallon, etc. So you've got some different options that are available there, just depending on which one you're at. Then moving back, series of other options there as well. Basic reset, so you can bring this thing back to its factory default instead. Next up, you've also got, so just tire information. So you start to drive, and it's going to let you know what tire information is available there. It's the dash. Really nice along the passenger side there. It's almost got like a faux like carbon fiber look to it, but it's not carbon fiber. It's just like a glossy look, though. Push button start inside of the Seltos. And then this is the smaller 8-inch media screen. So there are technically two different options that are available. It's either going to be this smaller 8-inch screen, or there's a larger 10.25 inch one instead. Big difference between the two is that this 8 inch has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. The larger one is a wired connection. And then that larger one, though, also has factory navigation, whereas the smaller one just doesn't. So those are a few things to consider here, but this smaller screen is going to be standard in some of the base trim levels with that larger one available in the majority of the lineup. But if you want to walk through on the larger screen, You'll find that link down in the description of the video. But let's dive into this one. So first thing to point out, you've got a radio button along the very top. So if you wanted to, you could change out between all of your different presets there. So AM, FM, etc. Media is where you go if you wanted to go between AM, FM, Bluetooth. So if your phone was connected, USB music. So if you had a USB stick with MP3s on it, you'd also be able to use that as your audio source instead. I'm going to start it from zero and kind of crank the volume up as we go. It's actually really solid audio inside of this thing, even just in the base system. So let's try this again from zero and there's nothing done after like uh, post-processing. This is all just from the microphone itself. Okay, so at first I had it at about half volume and then I cranked it up. It was about three quarters of the way there. I have adjusted the treble and bass on this one though. So the treble is down two points and the bass is up three. So it's got just like a deeper audio experience there. So the bass system, I gotta say, like it's actually better than I expected. I mean, it's not quite as good as the upgraded system, but still it's pretty solid all at the same time. And then if you were hooked up through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you could listen that way. So that's a nice thing. Like, you don't have to be hooked up through Android Auto or CarPlay. You could just stream over Bluetooth if you wanted to, which we'll touch on in a second. There's a little star button. And when you push that, what do you want it to do? Do you want it to bring you home, go to Bluetooth audio, phone, phone projection, things like that, so you can customize it if you want. 
volume rocker along the left side. You can also turn your audio on or off. A seek button along the top right hand side. And then you can also enter your setup, which gives you a ton of other options that are available. Along the very bottom, you can tune this way if you want to. And then you can also press there in order to kind of enter. But we'll touch on that one as we start moving through the screen. You've got your menu button along the very top in order to edit, edit out different widgets. So if you wanted to edit out your home icons, you've got the flexibility to do it. So you could just do a press and drag if you wanted to customize this a little bit. Press back. Menu, you can also have a QR code, so you can scan that code in order to bring up your, uh, your online user manual instead. From there, you can also edit the left or the right widget, so what's showing up there. And then you can also reset. So if you've played around with this too much and you don't like it, you can just hit reset there to bring it back to the factory default screen instead. You've got current time and date along the very top, and then what station you're currently listening to. And I said you can jump between all of your different presets this way. You can jump and look at your all menu. So this is essentially everything that's available within the vehicle. Or you saw there, you can kind of do a press and hold if you wanted to be able to adjust these things out as well. So if you wanted to customize the look, the layout, you've got that flexibility. Moving back home, you've got a few other options. So let's kind of dive through and I'll show you how everything works. So we'll go to the all menus first. And I guess we're starting off by adding in a phone. So right there, you can see hands-free calling, Bluetooth audio, etc. So you do have the flexibility if you want to just use the phone for calling or if you want to use it strictly for audio or you can do a mix of both. But all you're going to do is hit OK. Installing the phone. You can see there the names matched up and the pin numbers match up. So we're going to pair. We want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up. I'm going to hit don't allow. I mean, obviously, if this was your, uh, your vehicle, you'd hit yes there. And then, like I said, one really nice thing is that the Seltos also has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So after you've connected, it gives you the option of saying not now or use CarPlay. But as you can see there on the phone, you can click through and then you've got the phone. That said unsuccessful because I said no earlier. But you've got, if you said yes, you'd have your call history, contacts, there's a dial pad there. You can see the phone name, your battery level, and then your connection status as well. And then on the phone, if you wanted to, you could hit use CarPlay. And then if for whatever reason it's not pulling up, it's because I didn't hit it instantly. What you can do is if you go back home, the workaround, you go to your phone there, you go to menu, Bluetooth settings. So you can get to this option a few different ways, but from here, all you're gonna do is hit phone projection and then connect. And that's going to let you connect to CarPlay. So you can see there it's currently connecting and three, two, one, you are fully connected. Now, obviously, if you hit yes right away, it would just have launched you into CarPlay, but I kind of played around with it a bit first. But you've got this full screen CarPlay, which looks really nice. Along the very top left, you can see current time, connection and battery levels, which map application was open last. So right now I opened up Waze last, but if I went into Apple Maps instead, you can see there, it's kind of figuring out where I am. You can search for and look at previous destinations. No pinch to zoom capabilities, but there is light drag and drop. You can go plus and minus if you wanted to go that route. Change it to 2D, 3D, and then circle back on yourself. If you went into Google Maps, that changes it out. You can search for addresses. You could also avoid highways, toll roads, ferries, things like that. Change out map colors, adjust volumes, etc. And then if you press there, go back home, you can launch into Waze, and it's the same idea. So you've got that basic move capability. Press there in order to zoom in and out if you want to. Search for addresses and things like that. Moving back home, this next one is going to be your media or audio. So Live One is a radio app. You've got podcasts. If you were listening to different things, those would show up as available options. And then this bottom one is miscellaneous. So was your calendar open, your phone open, settings open last, etc. This button brings you back home to kind of this like mid screen. And then you can kind of switch across. So it's going to be kind of like your home screen versus this screen instead. So it's nice that you've got that option. You could press the Kia button if you wanted to go back home instead. And then that's one of the cool things because you could then hit radio. And let's say if you wanted to listen to the radio while you were also going with Apple CarPlay, you would have that flexibility, which is great. And one nice thing on the steering wheel, you can press and hold the voice command prompt if you wanted to activate your Siri assistant there as well. And then on your phone, if you go into general settings, CarPlay, find your vehicle, so Seltos, you can forget it, turn CarPlay off, or you can customize it. 
So let's say if you're a bigger fan of, well, I don't know, maybe you wanted to listen to your audiobooks and you're a big fan of podcasts, you can just do kind of like a drag and drop. In order to adjust, you can delete apps out. So if you know you're never going to use some of these things, you can remove it. And it completely removes it from the via, from the CarPlay here, but it adds it back on. So you could add it back in if you want to, or if you've played around with the settings here too much, you just hit reset, reset layout, and that brings you back to the factory default screen there instead. So very straightforward. And like I said, it is going to be wireless inside of this one, but you could technically plug in through USB if you wanted to go wired instead. It's just that wireless connection is available with the smaller screen. And then you can enter setup there along the very bottom, device connections, and then you've got Bluetooth connections, phone projection, and things like that. So if you wanted to, you could hook back up again. So Car it's unavailable, obviously, because CarPlay is running. So if we go back, phone projection, you can disconnect from CarPlay. Go back into Bluetooth, Bluetooth connections, reconnect for either one of these, reconnect, and then you can see there it's connecting back to the phone again. So we've essentially disconnected from CarPlay and we're hooking up strictly through Bluetooth for hands-free calling and then for audio as well. So you can see there are connections there. So I know quite a little bit of info, but that's how you set up an Android or an iPhone device inside of the Kia Seltos. Setting up an Android device is the exact same process. So if you weren't on the screen, say if you were back on the home screen there, you could press phone there, in it's setup, device connections, Bluetooth connections, and then you're either going to add or delete a device. So in this case, we want to just go and add a device. We want hands-free call in Bluetooth. I'm going to say yes to that. So it's disconnecting from the iPhone. Seltos, pins match up. So let's pair. And we are connected and same idea. Supports Android Auto, so let's connect to that. They like said it's a wireless connection there as well. So it's wireless across the board for, well, for this one. But when you're in the larger screen, it's a wired connection instead. So you could go wireless or wired with the smaller screen. But I mean, look at that. Fully connected there. You can see what's currently going on with your maps. If you're connected for audio, very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side. So you can push there in order to get to kind of this like split screen view instead or icon view. You could push there to activate your Google Assistant if you want to. But same thing, you could do a press and hold on the steering wheel if you wanted to activate your assistant that way instead. You could pull up maps, and then it's a full screen map. And then, nice, pinch to zoom capabilities. Very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side. You can push there in order to adjust your route options, about info, and things like that. So if you wanted to avoid motorways, toll roads, ferries, etc., you've got that flexibility. Push there in order to get to this split screen. Push there to get to back to this screen instead. You've got your mic there, podcasts, and then what's currently going on with your connection, time, and things like that. A button press to get back to the split screen, back into full screen maps instead. So not quite as much flexibility as the iPhone side, but still pretty nice all at the same time. Now, if you hit setup, this brings us back to this one. Go into device connections, phone projection. Let's disconnect from the Galaxy. So as of right now, neither are connected for phone projection, but if you go back into Bluetooth, you could, if you want to, try to reconnect to the Galaxy again. Perfect. So Bluetooth audio, so the S9 is connected again. And that's one nice thing, because you can adjust here which one's going to what. And the big benefit there is, let's say if you've got all of your music on one phone, but you have just one phone for your phone calls instead, you've got that flexibility to kind of do like a mix and match between any of these four. Then you can also select if you wanted to delete devices, delete, yes. And that deletes the phones from the vehicle. It's that simple to be able to do it. Hopping back, you've got connection priority. So if you have multiple phones connected, it's who's going to get connection priority there. Prompts, and then your system info is the big one here. So if you wanted to change your vehicle name from the default Seltos, you click here. And then you can change the name to whatever you'd like it to be instead. You can also change out your pass key. Something that's not 000 is usually a good idea. And then you've got phone projection there again, but you do need to be connected to either Android or an Android or iPhone using CarPlay or Android Auto in order to use it. But that's how you set up phones inside of the Seltos. Moving back into all menus. So we've already seen phone, phone projection, voice memo. Gives you the flexibility of recording memos inside of the vehicle if you want. 
You can jump into the radio so you can see there all of the safe presets that, are, that you've saved so far. You could also, if you just kind of tune to whatever station, let's go 94.9, nice local station here. You can see there, you can save it if you want to, and that saved the preset. You can change between AM, FM along the top, HD radio, or toggle the display off, bring it back to life. You can go through and enter a station manually instead if you want to. So if you're a big fan of listening to certain ones, press in. You can look at station lists, so to see everything that's available. So if you're new to an area, you're not sure what you can listen to, you just go to station list there, and you can see all the stations, and you can save out whichever ones you want to. Pressing back again, you can scan FM, or you can delete presets. So if you've entered one and you're just not a big fan, you can hit delete, delete. And as you can see there, it's, it's deleted that preset. So that's nice that you've got the flexibility to be able to adjust. Media, we saw earlier, you can select what media you're listening to. You can enter a quiet mode, and that's essentially going to lower all of the different audio in the vehicle. So if you've got sleeping kids in the back, there's a QR code there. So if you wanted to scan in for your user manual, and then you can enter setup. And same idea, so you can enter setup a few ways. So let's say if you're back on the home screen, you can kind of go through, you can enter setup there, or button press to get into the setup there instead. Same idea, display off, reorder icons, you can hit your sound settings, so big one there, speed-dependent volume. So as you go faster or slower, it's automatically going to adjust the volume out. Startup volume limiter, so if you started it and the volume's super loud when you turned your car off last, it's automatically going to make sure that volume's nice and low. Position of focus, you can kind of tweak it out that way instead if you want to as like a finer focus. The beeping, if that drives you nuts, you could toggle it off there. Your tone, usually treble down a bit. Bass crank three gives you really good audio inside of this thing. Next up, options for volumes. So you've got beeping, ringtones, alerts, and things like that. And which level do you want all of these things at? So it's great that you can kind of customize each individual one if you want to. You can get rid of radio noise. There's driver assistant warnings. So as warnings come up, it's going to essentially lower all of your different warnings. It's the same idea for park safety. So if you're reversing and you're backing up and getting closer to an obstacle, Parking safety priority means it's going to lower all of your volume, so you can hear the beeping as you back up. And then you've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, so you can adjust the volume for the media or for your voice guidance instead. So if you find things are a little bit too low, you could crank it right through the screen if you want, or just reset it back to default. Leave. Well, that's the basics there. Display, so you can auto-adjust the brightness or adjust it manually if you want. So if you want it darker, brighter, whatever the case may be, or just reset it, you could also screen out this way to go to a day or night mode. So what's going to happen is when it's auto adjust, it's going to either increase or decrease brightness depending on how bright it is outside. Blue light filter, very useful for later on at night. So you can make the screen warmer or darker. And then you can also have it come on automatically or during scheduled times. So if you're gonna use the blue light filter, do you wanna have it automatically come on when it gets dark out? Or do you want the, or do you want to schedule it when it comes on your, uh, yourself? When you turn the display off, do you want nothing? an analog clock with different watch faces. So when you go to turn the display off, or do you want to have a digital clock instead when you turn the display off? So a matter of preference there. And then you've got options for buttons. So three unique ones. There's the one here and then two on the steering wheel, which gives you the flexibility of doing a few things. Series of general settings. So you've got your basic system information current date and time. Some of these things are grayed out because it's auto, but if you deselect auto, you can automatically adjust this out if you want to. Which time zone are you currently in? And then daylight savings time, or do you want that military time instead? Language, do you want English, French, Spanish, or Korean? And then which type of keyboard do you want? So QWERTY keyboard, English, Latin default, media options, so you can have it so that your, your radio's off when the vehicle started up. And then you can do a factory reset. So if you played around at the screen too much or you're selling it, you could just do a reset to bring it back to its default screen instead. You've got a basic Wi-Fi connection and then basic climate control settings there as well. So you can recirculate air if you want to. Auto ventilate. You can schedule ventilation as well. And that's essentially going to refresh the cabin. And then you can have it auto defog defrost for you instead. This one just has single zone climate control. All of the basic climate control settings. Dropping down, there would be the option for a wireless charge pad. It's just that this specific one doesn't have it. But there are a series of power points. You've got a traditional 12 volt, and then a USB type A, and then a USB type C down there as well. The shifter inside of this thing is nice. So you've got the park reverse neutral drive. 
You can drop it down if you wanted to adjust gears out yourself instead. This is a little rocker switch in order to move between different drive modes. So three individual modes, so normal, sport, or smart mode. Each mode will do something different, like your smart mode is going to hold onto the RPMs a little bit longer to give you a sportier performance as you drive. You've got the option for heated first row seats and then ventilated first row seats available, just depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in. This is the heated steering wheel button, and then you've got some passenger side controls, including downhill brake control. If you were in the auto on uh, the all-wheel drive, you'd also have an all-wheel drive lock button if you wanted to stick in all-wheel drive mode all the time. Moving down, you've got a few cup holders, manual parking brake, and then an armrest with a nice amount of storage space. No other power points or anything like that on the inside there, though. I mentioned this is kind of an interesting gloss. There's some gloss all over the place inside of this thing. A little glove box there. And then shooting up overhead. This is just a manual dimming rear view mirror. Basic controls for cabin lights. And then this thing does have the option for a little sunroof. It's just that inside of this base trim level, I guess technically this is the second lowest trim. There's no sunroof available, but it is technically available in some of the higher trims of the Seltos. From there, you've also got visor light. Right up over top there, you can turn on yourself, a little receipt business card holder, and then a little mirror built in, and this thing extends out, blocking all of the sun, that might be hitting your face. There is the option for a head-up display inside of the Celto, so the 24 model, and that's going to depend on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. Uh, this specific one doesn't have it, but when I'm in a Seltos that does have it, what I'll do is I'll link down in the description of this video with a walkthrough on how the head-up display works and how it looks, because it is really, really neat. So this is the way that I would traditionally drive the vehicle if I was driving myself. And like with the seat set up this way, inside of the second row, I've got a great amount of knee space, great amount of foot space, and like functional second row space, which is amazing. Like I can actually fit back here, which is pretty rare. But I mean, sitting fully off, right? I even have headspace. Like I've got almost three and a half inches of headspace, which is amazing. And like the seats are comfy. Not uh, obviously like quite as comfortable as the first row, but still not too shabby. Good. Good, good, good. Uh, there would be the option for heated second row seats in some trim levels of the vehicle. So if that's a feature that you want, you're looking at the highest trims in order to get it. But... I mean, there's not too much back here. It's pretty straightforward and simple. You've got a speaker along the door, driver, passenger side, basic window controls. Up overhead, there's a handle with a little hook, driver, passenger side. Got a little light up overhead too. And then behind the driver's side, there's no pocket, but you will find one just behind the passenger side. And then just behind the first row armrest, there are a few basic vent controls, two USB Type-C power points, and then a little storage tray as well. And then, only other thing to point out would be cup holders back here. So there's no lever or anything like that in order to be able to get to the cup holders. You just kind of have to jam your fingers in and then pull down in order to get access to the cup holders there. Filling up fuel inside of the Seltos is also straightforward, just along the driver's side. One nice thing about the Seltos is that this thing is actually locked. So you need to hop into the first row in order to be able to unlock this thing. But I mean, straightforward to do it. And then you've got just a cap system there. If you're worried about fuel theft, you could get an aftermarket cover there with a key if you want to. Looking at fuel economy, doesn't matter if you're in the two liter or the 1.6 liter turbo. Regular 87 is your minimum manufacturer's recommendation. So you don't need to use a higher octane fuel in either vehicle. There is the argument of using a higher octane in turbocharged engines. It's just not going to make a big difference with the 1.6 turbo. If you're concerned about fuel economy, you definitely want to look at front wheel drive. But I mean, I was kind of stressing it there. If you live in, in any place where you're going to get snow, having the all wheel drive system is just like a complete night and day difference. So if you are looking for better winter performance, all wheel drive is where you're going to want to be. You just get slightly less fuel economy when you look at all wheel drive as an option. The back end of the Seltos has that same black highlight that runs throughout the body. There's a glossy highlight right in the middle of the bumper too, which looks kind of neat. Now some basic styling wise, we've got the Seltos badge along the side, Kia badge along the middle, reverse wiper, as well as the rear camera. So those things are going to be standard. But other than that, there's not really much in the back end of the vehicle here. 
And then just underneath the I and the A and Kia, all you're gonna do is kind of jam some fingers in there. Push. Up she goes. And I mean, in the trunk area, there's actually not too much stuff back here. Off to the right-hand side, there's literally nothing. Off to the left-hand side, there's a tiny little light back there. It's really about it. But this one, so just regular carpeted liner in the back. You could do an aftermarket weather tech if you wanted to. So if you wanted something for the back to protect it, like muddy boots and things like that. One thing that I like about this though, so you've got a little slider here and lifting this out, there is a mini spare tire with a jack. So if you wanted to change the tire yourself, if you pop one, you do have that mini spare available as an option inside of this thing. And then like I said, you can change it yourself, but you also do have access to Kia roadside assistance. So if you want somebody else to change it for you, you've got that flexibility. Uh, one thing that I like about a lot of Kia vehicles is what's going on with the cargo area. So you pull this cargo tray off, there's actually a way that you can slide it down a little bit lower to give you a little bit more height. So if you need a little bit more space, you actually do have the flexibility to do it. So it's kind of like a multi-adjustable or multi-height cargo area. Gives you an extra like three and a half, almost four inches of space, which is kind of cool. So if you need that extra space, you can just slide the tray out in different ways if you want to. Folding down the second row seats inside of the Seltos is also straightforward. So for the most part, you should be able to reach it from the back, but there's a release along the top. You just pull and push. If you can't reach it from the trunk area, you're just gonna go into the second row seats there. Along the top, you can just grab and down the seat goes. And when you've got the seat down, it gives you quite a little bit of space inside of the cargo area of the vehicle. But when you've got the tray down as well, it does create a little bit of a lip, but it's a fairly flat fold otherwise. Not fully flat, but fairly flat at the same time. And that was everything you needed to know about the 2024 Kia Seltos. Hope to learn a thing or two. I know this one was just the base media screen, but when I do have one for the full walkthrough on the newer one, the 10.25 inch, you'll find it down in the description of this video. But down in the description, you will find build links for this one, contact information for Durham Kia, and a number of other walkthrough videos as well. But if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and until I see you next time, take care.